Hello, everyone. Caress Gaia as she has caressed you. I would like to talk about today a very beautiful idea. And it's actually the greatest love story in existence. It is the love story between man and his world. And you see, if you are someone who has just stumbled upon this video as an individuation, as an individual, you will suddenly recognize that your world is at first your world. But what else could there be? And you have come to terms in accepting that you are on this ground, you are in this position, you're in this plane, and so this is how existence is moving. However, how is the observance of existence moving? And so when you seek that observance, you are in essence seeking for the meaning of your reality. Thought is the awareness to shape, but once you try to find thought, the thinker dissolves. Because that one association and solidification of a thought can be loosened up and suddenly so many other potentials of reality can be solidified. So you can see just as how this is real, so many other things can be real as well. And in that, your world begins communicating to you differently when you get a different existential self-awareness. This is the key point to every person who is interested, into, interested by self-discovery. The key is self-awareness. Because you are seeing, why are you aware of this plane? Why are you here? In other words, when you ask yourself, why are you here? Don't accept that, oh gosh, we just don't know. In other words, be such an observant gaze that just like like the intensity of a man long ago sitting by a tree and not getting up until revelation has been seen, your intensity of wanting to know your own truth will awaken you, will amplify your ability and your capability and will show you how your impermanence is meaningful in the permanent qualities it is allowing you to cultivate. So seemingly when, when someone dies, when someone goes out of the spectrum of this livelihood that we have as people being alive, and when they die, when they go in that range, you suddenly, it's as if like someone suddenly gone into a mine, into a cave. You're suddenly observing that and you're wondering, wow, where, where is that focus of existential attention gone? And so, if you're sensitive, you will see it hasn't left because it's still holding on to itself. And an idea holding on to itself requires a letting go process for a sense of salvation and serenity. So you will see that man has looked at his world and he has been the individual walking in it. He has had that separation as if I'm separate, that's separate, this is it, it's boxes moving around like Minecraft. You know, if, if, if you are thinking in that sense, that is fine, but who is observing the screen of this game? And so when you seek that observer, a sense of a mysticism comes into you where you're like, okay, I don't know some things. I'm not going to lie to myself that I know it, I think I know, or I think I know what's going on. I don't know. I'm going to allow this profound, deep, I don't know to make, let me look at my things so closely to see what's on. So whoever you are, if you're in any life condition and you're just sitting there and you're like, gosh, how do I change this? You know, all the change begins when you begin observing the same stuff you're bored with much deeply it's a revaluation of the bored evaluation that you have there's no such thing as boredom there's just a lack of attention in that range <laughs> but still the, your energy is still manifesting if you're sensitive to more of how the internal dimensions are just an opening similar to how uh, there's no reason for there to be multi-dimensionality but suddenly in that gap between the clouds the light of the sun just 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 in a sense pours out 
So the individual consciousness, its awareness through its allowance and acceptance and compassion and love to its environment. So suddenly, let's say you, you stop trying to change the world, forget the world. You don't know, you don't have all the eyes of the world. You have your immediate bubble of awareness. This, this awareness that you have in this room or wherever you're standing, this immediate reality is what you have to work with. Now, how is this working? How, is, how are you aware as a being? And these profound questions come, come and they're just like, it's as if they're calling and asking, you know, they're in the car honking and waiting for you to get on this journey and discovering yourself. Self-discovery is an internal process because you are, in a sense, stopping every external thing that's going on for you. And you're like, where is this? What is this? And after your five fingers have represented W's, you will be a silent and still observance of being, which is the allowance and the opening of your own greater view. What that means is, when I say your own, it's very important because the West has certain confusions in, in, their, in the basic uh, uh, stemming of how their images for their spirituality is structured. Terminology and words are keeping knowledge alive, but they are not giving all of it. Your life is giving you the life that you are, in a sense, seeking. It is a life process. It is not a mental thought process. A thought process is just there. In other words, uh, would you rather want an actual uh, experience of the thing, you know, or do you want to just read about it in some man's diary? Now, imagine that spectrum of awareness becoming aware of itself you will see that your mind internally will allow things to occur to your externality so it's as if, if my whole life i've been seeking oh gosh wh where do i go who do i go to how do i find this method how do i how do i get there you know it's as if you needed to stop and step a little back and just be still and just observe how you were thinking, just like how you would just stand back and watch yourself if you were doing something, you know, and simply see that reality is a choice, but since there are many choices, there are many realities. So it is the awareness to that moment within you of nothing and everything in which there is an emptiness where choice is always an object in and you are beyond choice in the sense that you have moved very playfully from the free will idea of the individual to the divine will, divine will sense of the collective which in a sense means you have observed life to a point where you're like okay I'm just gonna put away my mental idea my ideology just down for a little bit and I'm just going to go experience my internal dimensions and those internal dimensions are not terms so me talking about it right now is keeping is putting up a fence but at the same time I'm telling you look through the fence look through my words and see that it is your own experience absorbing into your own greater ex experience it's as if when it's as if many of yourselves have just come to the same meeting to recognize they're all one, they're all in the same building. And it, it is very important here to be observant that when your reality also shifts, you should not try to play with the physical too much. If you're wanting things out of life, needing things in the sense that you're recognizing them as these are the ideas I have, I want this, what do you mean I want this, you know? If you have that mentality, you will see that that is not you. Your consciousness is beyond the forms that it is observing, for it is the observance that is keeping the observer there. The mind of man is the prophet for its body. But the consciousness and the existential dissolution into nothing is the prophet for the mind. And what I mean by that is that you are not just a human being. You are a moment of existence and experience in which your immediate reality is tuned into the human being. 
But as your awareness expands and your bubble of presence in a sense bursts into greater vision, you will see that you are as much existent in yourself as, as you are in a tree or anything that is considered external because your awareness of the lens is existentially there. It's as if you have just realized that the rhythms of your heart had a greater secret they were hiding and it was the secret that you were one with the rhythm of this universe. And it's very important to see that you are not form or you are not the judgment of form or you're not even a form that can be judged. You are the moment of being first then an immediate experience of humanity. And so it is how you are acknowledging this moment of existence and attention that allows your vision to, in a sense, give you a sense of simultaneity in your, in your experience. And so the pilot of consciousness is, is learning to uh, find the street towards the <laughs> academy, you know, pilot's academy. So what that means is that the individual is recognizing, whoa, I no longer need external teachers or teachings. I need just a very deep internal and receptive observance and selfless observance of my being in which all expression is simply playfully shown. It is communicated by the moment that you are, as the moment that you are. You do not understand this moment of self-awareness that man has is the profound link. It is as if it is the next step of greater form on this planet. We are guardians of this dimension because we are ambassadors of it by existing in this dimension. So it does not matter where you exist, but wherever you exist, you are an immediate presence in your dimension so you are an aspect of your dimension you are the dimension beyond thought of individuation in the sense that your walks are done through a collective knowing that will never find itself because it doesn't need to and you will see that after these very deep internal experiences of nothingness <laughs> and a profound emptiness which is just providing you with the realness of other probabilities of projection that are in a sense not real to you immediately but to other aspects of yourselves which are present in those in those ranges of I guess multidimensionality. You see man in his world has always been looking at things very chronologically and it's as if we started somewhere and we're going somewhere. <laughs> but in, before anyone could talk, they were looking at life in a way that language was not interrupting. Language was not defining. It's as if before any human being learned language, they were just in a plane and they were just enjoying that awesome, let's say, sunset you see just in, as by the window in a plane, you know. Uh, and, but then suddenly you have to come back to the airport and so that, that range of reality is not seen. You need to see that your judgments keep you in the location of their imagery. So if I consider myself to be a bad man and I communicate and I say this to myself, these images that I am associating to bad will be my location because that is what my attention is telling me I am. You must understand that your eyes are transcendent. And so this is where illusion is created if there is ignorance to what is there. When your eyes are transcendent, that means I'm going, I'm walking in a park and I'm looking at a tree. As I look at this tree, I have an awareness of space and time and just, I do not name it, but I'm present in it. And so as I'm aware of this, in every act that I do, I am also experiencing my presence in the reality of the opposite. So in every word that I am saying, uh, once you become sensitive to terminology, you become an experience of it. It's as if you can't just use a word in just one side of the spectrum. You have both. 
So language then cannot bother you because you're always the confrontation of your whole spectrum because it is your intensity of intention to, in a sense, uh, walk in that way. Everyone has their own walk and this is not a walk that you can look from someone else and be like, oh, okay, so that's, that's how my own walk looks like? Should look like, you know, it, it's not like that. Your own walk is new explorations of your being which you haven't explored yet. So if you think that from this point you have certainty when you are a point that is moving and changing every moment of your life, then that is where you need to get the wisdom of the sage and simply go in nature. My friends, going in nature and being actually with the natural world dissolves your concept of anything being unnatural. Sit in your own presence and enjoy yourself this is what they do not communicate because it's not supposed to be communicated however if it's not it'll also be a kind of a kind of off so it needs to be communicated too <laughs> so what i'm trying to say is that insanity is insecurity and fear not letting you go further in exploring and observing ideology and how thought is present. Ignore nothing and there will be no ignorance ever. And that is the honesty of the fool. He is not trying to do anything, but he is walking. And simply this honesty of the fool is also the same innocence found in children because they don't know, but they are just so so allowed to be you know it's as if children are allowed to be and then when they grow up they forget oh gosh why am i not allowed to be like that you know and then they look at it and they're like oh gosh because i've lived 40 years like this oh, oh that's why you know? so, <laughs> so it's very important to recognize that you need no other man's valuation of your values you need a natural authentic observance of who you are as a being Give yourself this gift and find Mr. Within. Go and see what you are as a being. And being is not term. They cannot term being. The word being is, is in a sense a black hole in, in language. <laughs> so what becomes really important for you then no longer becomes trying to be purposeful as a response to the game of life that you're in. You become an awareness and more of an observer, so you will see a lot of your lessons actually are coming because you're letting go of things. In other words, um, there are some people who hear and do not respect these, these monks and these people who go into these practices where they renounce things in life. So back in the day, the guy was like, all right, I, I need no woman, I need no beer, you know, I, I don't need anything, you know, and he just, he'd just go in a cave. But going in that cave also meant exploring where his existence leads through the unknown, through the love of the unknown, through his compassion to know who he is, you know. So that, is, that has its own beauty of a life as well. Therefore, There were people, or in a sense, there are people who, there are people who look at these ideas of meditation and look at it and they're like, do I really have the time to sit down? <laughs> so they're like, no, I don't have the time to sit down. But, and then they go here, oh gosh, what else? Where does this meditation lead? Oh, renouncing everything, so I gotta let go of all these things. What the hell? What, what, what? You know, and so they, they back away from it. But if you go understand the context in which uh, that ideology was introduced, it was back then, and back then, it was a beautiful experience because the, the meaning of life was so unknown, there was so, so much of nothing that their exploration had to be of something deeper. So the guy would eventually walk and imagine he'd go to a lot of parties back in the day and he'd stop. 
it'd be like, okay, all right, what is there more in life if, if, for example, my grandparents just passed away? Why am I still in this party room in the same way, right? So you see, for example, a scenario in life can hit this. Some people live, live like this, right? And when that scenario comes, you, suddenly, for example, the reality of the valuable fun that the party had shifts. You're like, okay, I see, I see that there's more to than just that game I was engaged with and that game which I thought was the only game to play. Now, after that you've given up, you will go and see, you will sit in nature and you will suddenly see that um, there have been people, for example, if we were in ancient India back in the day, that are sitting by trees for let's say 13 days, 40 days, just, just in, in, in deep, intense meditation. And so you wonder, why would a human being in such a external world, in such a vast external world, choose to close his eyes and sit down and go into an experience of nothing? If you are someone who has played video games, you may understand that perhaps there was some quality of the character that mystic or yogi in some in samdi that the quality is is as if life is seen to be the screen of the game it's like you know as long as you're in the game it's fine but suddenly you realize it's a screen you're like gosh it's like it's not even real it's like in my tv for example you know so that awareness to experience is different so renouncing life is not just it's like it's not like a jolly thing you just throw these away it's that you pay attention and you see that what is not serving you is leaving so the moment you get serious with yourself in a very playful way of trying to know who you are it's as if insecurity fear all these come come at you to quickly fade it's as if you're getting rid of things you're not serving. It's as if you're waking up and, you know, the dust is getting off your shoulder, you know, and, you know. And if you're that yogi who's been meditating for 13 days, it's like getting up and realizing your thighs can't move. <laughs> so, your legs can't move. So it's, 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 it's a different experience of reality. And we must have such compassion and grace where our awareness as a being is always an allowance for form to prosper. And so that is how the physical dimension thrives as it is. In which the solution you need to give the world is not something, it's not some idea, it's not some talk, it's not something like that. It's your own deeper understanding in which the minute you go into that deeper understanding, your natural expression changes. A lot of those personalities that do not serve you are inefficient, you suddenly leave. It's as if, it's, it's as if personality and characteristics are kept by the vague memory of uh, what we are valuing logically. So it's like even when your logic changes, your understanding, let's say you read a book, you're not, you don't have the same character. It's as if uh, so you have seen something about the world, you know? It's as if you've suddenly seen an eagle fly in front of you, you know? So it's, 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 as, it's as new and intense as that. In observing life very beautifully and compassionately, you will begin, uh, in a sense, integrating in regards to how you're aware of life, and so you will get more existential responsibility. This is a very important lesson for a, for a civilization that is growing in a planet. I mean, think about it, even, even the logical mind can even demonstrate this, that uh, a civilization that is growing into awareness, if there is the consideration that there is collective awareness, its introduction to its collective awareness must be done gently and not that it must but if it is it's valuable it's so valuable you know why waste it you know why why <laughs> and what that means is that we want man to observe his ideas and with his own certainty step into a greater sense of collective knowing beyond his form so that, that lesson of that technology of how you're acknowledging yourself as an individual, but also as a collective being, 
and this collective being is formless, it's unspeakable, it's a vast aspect of your internal dimension, uh, which is, which I will definitely create many bridges to. But it, it is an understanding that it is a letting go of your limitation to be limitless. And this letting go of your limitation is not by letting it go as if like, oh, I'm gonna forget, I'm gonna let go of everything, of all my limitations, you know. It's, it's an observance so deep that you realize what you were considering to be a limitation was never a limitation. That is how your limitations and problems leave by never being present in the consciousness that you are. And so you will find yourself hysterically laughing. There's been a moment in my life where <laughs> just a sense of my thought and sound and image, and it's as if all reality stopped in the sense that there was no sense of even something having to ever move to stop. And just in that stillness, there was a, a knowing beyond form, beyond thought. So you see a lot of knowing the human mind is categorizing it as, oh, this is this guy's understanding. This is this guy's understanding. This is this guy's. But it's actually just an observance of nature, which is present within many rhythms in many different senses, where a greater sense of intelligence is observing it and keeping it here. Similar to how when you look at an ant and uh, the, the existence of the ant in any reality is kept there by your observance. Because if there's no one to see, then there's no end. So it is, it is the workings of your eyes, which each, each man should discover and explore and observe for himself, that will give him the ability that is existentially present. So you become a huge uh, nature lover, but not just the nature of anything, the nature of all reality, of all creation. It's as if, because you saw creation was so vast, devotion entered your life. Not because someone told you worship that God. It's because you saw that it does not matter what symbol it used. It, it is important, the clarity of the eyes that gaze through. And so the sword of transcendence is always cutting through. We are always going through different aspects. You are, you are a very beautiful, simple and complex self-communication in which your observance of that then becomes a natural choice in what you must be. For clarity was always clear. When you realize you're a clear being, the illusion was not even a mistake. It was all a sense of magnificent, business <laughs> just it's, it's just how it is you know so perhaps you might think that that moment where that in, in those movies we find that you know western guy running to you know in, in that uh, let's say native american tribe and trying to communicate to them it's like hey guys do you have do you have water shelter or something we need help the the guys just pointed at something and it was like right you know <laughs> and it's always important to really see what is here. In other words, that is the most important lesson that any school or anyone can teach you. Observe what is here. I mean, think about it. If, if, if a dying man was in his grave, what would he say? He would say, be aware of now. <laughs> because, you know, just that's what I'm doing. That's the best advice I, a dying man can give to a living man, is that just be aware of what's happening. Because this is happening to me now. You know, I'm transitioning. So it is very playful and important uh, for you to, through your sincerity, this is a very important concept. And I believe it's in, in, in the Arabic and Sufi terms, I think it's called ikhlas. It means sincerity. That is important. Forget, forget smartness or wit or plan of action. Just see your sincerity in the moment. Are you being sincere? I'm serious, just, just, just for a second. Observe yourself, look at yourself, and be like, am I being honest with myself? And if I was, would I be thinking about if I would be honest? And you would see that honesty is always beyond ideology. The honest man does not need to create ideology or say things to, in a sense, have his reality be satisfied. 
his presence and his trust in who he is as a being, as life, gives him the beauty of his passage. Similar to how many prophets, their beauty was not just in what they did and how they lived, but in how they were passed in their passage. And that's why the passages are very important, not for a linear understanding, but for a very allowed existential observance to really see and, uh, in a sense, activate yourself by any aspect of that reality which resonates. So what that means is that when you're going into a museum and you're watching different paintings, for example, this philosophy, this religion, this science, this whatever, and you're seeing all these pictures of things, and of course they're pictures because you've got to go learn and see what the picture is, you know, to be, to be that's, what, that's how the mind thinks. But when you're walking in this museum, you begin to see that the intelligence of the person walking past image is beyond the image. So it's as if uh, the picture in, 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 the, in the museum, its design, its art, the way it's drawn and how man is seeing it is always more than just the colors. If you're saying that picture is just color, no, it's all the lines and designs and how it is. So your understanding is valuable to you. And your understanding is very deeply and profoundly gone into by you observing the nature of how you understand and how all understanding works. In other words, be comfortable to be your own unique view. Because it is more than just a dilemma of lions thinking they're sheep. It's the fact that the lion has the reality of the sheep and why is he there? <laughs> so what that means is you must find your knowing through utmost clarity of being. And if you are a sincere and compassionate human being who has love for life, any aspect of life, if you just have a love for life, you know, even, for example, those people who party, that is a love for life. They're, they're, they love living. That's why they're going up, you know. So, by observing your love for life, you must see that the observer that is the, doing the loving, that is, that is the love, is also the allowance uh, to be all potentials of reality in that spectrum. You can be who you are if, you're, if everyone loves you. I mean, that's the psychology, <laughs> right? That is the psychology of many people where uh, it, when they look at how, they, for example, the, the guy was a criminal, the guy did an action, it, it happened because there was a lack of love, because there was a lack of attention. But no, it was a lack of existential responsibility for the individual to observe what is the individual. Every being right now should, in a sense, let, let, <sighs> external responsibility in the sense that others are responsible for you to be dropped like a cloud fading in the sky. And as the limitless sky comes in, you see that no, the, the externality is not the permission for your internality. It is from your internality that the external has been even permitted. So external permissions are no one's responsibility and cannot be found unless you observe your externality to then see that it's an internal alchemy. And then after you have observed the vastness of the simplicity of your being, in which everything and the most complex things suddenly all just faded into nothing. Similar to how a drop who had lived for eons as a drop suddenly is just dropped into an ocean. 
And Sangami is no longer the drop, but a greater experience of all existence. So you must understand that it's not just that you're trying to be a good human being. You're trying to be a very aware being in which your humanity is being handled properly. And so you need to play with yourself because when I say play, that means you need to be very gentle and authentic and just go in nature and just be in your states of what life really means to you and how you appreciate life. Anyone can find a, a view of life they can appreciate. Go to that view and just be in it and observe the state of being that you are. The states of being man are another dimension of mind compared to the state, to the re relevance we give to state of being as a body. In other words, states of being is when the mind and body are dancing in vast emptiness of consciousness. <laughs> And it's a very beautiful relationship. I find it's very rare for beings in a, in a planet like this to <laughs> have it this, this, this soon. Because you don't understand, the leap from animal to man was just a, a gift of multidimensionality. It's like, all right, let's, let's add this update. Ching, ching. You know, Celestial Engineers fixed it up. <laughs> and of course, the ultimate reality is beyond ideology, so words are meaningless when you are meaningful, when your being has become meaningful for you, full of meaning, right? And that is where you will see it's not that the dancers changed in life, it's not that the dance changed, it's that you changed the meaning of everything that you were observing by observing the moment that is now. <laughs> Advanced communicators realize that it is their trust in life and existence that is the beauty of where their presence may go and to the great halls that their presence may lead to. So, Become aware of the beauty of how you're experiencing life and its multidimensionality and recognize you are a unique individual. We, we, there is no hierarchy that is needed to categorize you as, as this kind of receiver, as this kind of receiver, even though our physicality is focused like this. But in subtle realms, our bodies are just bubbles of infinite change, you know? It's, 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 a, it's, it's, not it's not something for conception to touch. It's a different, it's a different room. Therefore, know that there has been this profound quote that they have said, what does the sage do before enlightenment? Let's say he's chopping wood, carrying water, doing basic things. What does the sage do after enlightenment? Chop wood, carry water, you know, and do the same basic things. But do you see the tone of my voice is different? So the intention of your existence as a self-aware being has shifted out of being an immediate response to form but a complete knowing of formless observance and this is profound guys this is where this is where you are your own door much blessings and remember it is in the dancer's loving smile where the key was in a sense always home. Much blessings and namaste.